Hello and welcome to 1320, the coolest hangout for youth, teens, everyone in between infinity and beyond. Welcome, 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 welcome. I, I, I lost my train of thought somewhere. Apokatikati. Anyway, uh, hi for those who are uh, new here. Let's just do this again. Okay. Hello and welcome to 1320, the coolest hangout for youth, teens, everyone in between, infinity and beyond. Again, I, I lost my train. <laughs> my, my train. My train of thought. <laughs> Hi, uh, for those who are new here, my name is Jaime Reyes, aka Burubi Toru, or, or you can call me um, uh, Rafiki Rambo. Yes, I'm Monica Rambo's. Uh, lost nephew for those who have watched the the teaser trailer of the marvels you know it's fire right anyway, 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 anyway that's not what we're talking about today today we are talking about the conspiracy of silence yes it is hot we are in mombasa i know in other places you'll be like huh no this is mombasa why am i wearing black <laughs> i chose this okay i i have to live with it so so, uh, the conspiracy of silence, that is the topic of today. Given that I think one, two weeks back, uh, the Secret Invasion trailer released and it's also a conspiracy thing, let us do this the Nick Fury way. Anyway, so uh, as we begin this, I want you to think of two situations, okay? Situation one, you live in a place where there is, let's say, a company, right? And you know, a manufacturing company especially. Processing ones as in Ashida Villa because they process, they don't have to start from scratch. So a manufacturing company and it produces, let's say, waste, okay, waste products that are intoxicating the environment, probably uh, flowing into rivers or water bodies or uh, finding themselves going into farms where plants grow, then the plants become intoxicated as well then not really intoxicated they become toxic then you eat them and people become sick and all of that think of it that way okay uh so what would you do in that situation would you say something about it or would you ignore it uh, not really ignore like be silent about it and not have changes happen and scenario number two is think of a family okay let's see it's a neighbor and in that family nobody talks to each other Okay, it's pure silence. Everybody keeps to themselves. The dad and as a kuja as something like nimeleta chakula, and that's it. Then the mom, she'll be in the kitchen cooking. Then like food is ready, and that's it. And it, they don't talk. It's just living NPC life, the NPC way. For those people who don't know NPCs in video games, we have non-playable characters those are npcs they don't have any part of the game they're just there existing they don't really do much exactly so think of those two situations yeah and uh if you look at them carefully most of the times are the lead to let's say destruction okay the first state here yeah, company and all it would lead to people getting sick weird diseases that uh, probably uh, we have not thought of a cure for it yet for yet for yeah for not for it for yet um, the second one it's probably the family won't like thrive as much okay uh -huh. I know that I, I chopped off the second portion of it because it would kind of lead back to the first example that I gave because uh, the second one was, let's say there is this poisonous plant that grows in their farm and it spews this weird poisonous thing that will poison their food and kill them slowly. But then that's kind of diverting back to the first example I gave. So yeah, I just used those two examples to help us understand what silence can do. Okay, and by silence, I don't mean just keeping quiet. By silence, I, I mean not taking action not taking effective action, not taking the right form of action, okay? 
and that, this is what we do as a church it is being it is being imbued eh, i'm trying my best to learn new words it is being imbued uh in our systems every single day and uh we kind of try to live with it but we need to stand up against it in a way we need to stand up against not taking action so yes um we need to stand up against it okay because we are taught specific things or we teach ourselves specific things given the environment that we are in you know how uh, animals or organisms adapt to the environment that's what we do as christians we get comfortable and we do not want to do things that would compromise our comfort okay let me give you an example yeah okay it's like five examples let's say the five states that we are in not like united states but five uh safety rules okay that the church has it you might say like hey this is not true but it happens it might not be to you specifically as a person or to your church but it happens okay safety rule number one seems to state that we don't offend anybody we keep it safe okay you don't say anything that find somebody might find offensive especially in this new day and age where everything is offensive i came to realize that math is racist i mean where is this world going i'm, I'm tired i'm tired me i'm going to nepal to live as a goat i am really tired <laughs> uh rule number two states don't talk about anything controversial mm. these are things that kind of have been set in place not that because it's the way this is the way it's not that that is the way it's just that we've put these things into society that it feels like it has to be implemented everywhere okay number three is don't trouble yourself trying to witness to people who will not even listen okay it's ile you speak to the people you speak to the audience that is listening to you ile you try finding uh uh what do you call it what do you call it a market for a people that need whatever thing you're selling them okay you can't this is, this is what we actually do in real life like let's say for example you want to sell rice you can't go somewhere like Mwaya and say that you have brought rice from let's say Pakistan to come and sell there because they grow their own rice okay they don't want anything to do with what you have because they really don't need it so you're like you know what I won't even try who knows maybe somebody wanted that pakistani rice to uh to like compare to their rice and find uh, what makes it more desirable you see you see yeah rule number four we don't care for people who are living in sin that sin has let them go to hell it's in a uh we are not in the same whatsapp group okay we just think that people who are in sin like people who are deep into the world don't deserve to be talked to because ha huh, what we live and say to them they are already seen as those ones are doomed for eternity i don't know okay this this really is weird i find this really weird because how do people get saved if we don't talk to them anyway rule number five don't change anything just as it was back in the 1800s when let's say a doctrine was set we should live it the same way okay Ile, let's say for example uh the praise and worship team should be let's say um only consisting of people who come from the area have you ever heard of those things they are very weird very weird things like where well, let's say you are somewhere around town like mombasa okay um if you don't come from within mombasa let's say you come from let's say somewhere like changamwe you can't join the praise and worship team because we always you are huku. or let's let's make it even better you come from somewhere like eldoret hi boss it does i don't mean like you go there every sunday from eldoret to no i mean like you come from like um kwenu okay kama we you are huku hatukutaki that type we don't change anything but then we've we've come we are we're in a society where inclusion is very important okay and this is the only good inclusion that we have in society like the inclusion that doesn't really 
offend people it, uh, it doesn't matter where you're from okay if you want to serve you can serve if you are from this community if you're from this uh, country even or race who knows who cares okay because I realize that you're talking to an international audience so I should not just base it off of Kenya people from around the world are watching this so yes um it may be people from different countries if they are willing to help let them okay if they're willing to do something let them let's just not sit there and be like you know what you're going to say stay in silence and not do anything about this situation and uh if for those who followed last week's service i know there wasn't a 1920 it was uh, resurrection sunday for those who followed the service last week, we learned about <laughs> a very weird perspective of the Bible that a lot of people don't really, uh, aren't really keen on. After Jesus resurrected, yes, then uh, the whole story of uh, the women like went to the tomb, then came back running and like, yo, Jesus is not in the tomb anymore, let's go check it out. Then the disciples, Peter, peanut butter and jelly, okay, uh, Peter, John, and they are the ones, they are the, oh, they're like four, three, three or four, Peter, James, John, there was Peter, there was John, and then there was somebody else, okay, and there was Andugu there, so they ran, John, Johnny Bravo, very fast overtook Peter Sutherland, okay, very fast to, to the tomb, Albo Ficapo, he stood outside, he didn't even go in, I mean, what was the, why were you running? Oh, it's it's very weird. Then imagine, uh, let's say, for example, Mtu oh, 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 kuna jamfle na pamilita pizza. You're like, hey, pizza, pizza, pizza. So you run very fast, kushinda kila mtu tano angusha tu ingine. Then you get there and you just sit. You don't look at the pizza box. You don't look who brought it. You just get there and like, hmm, okay. Hmm. It's very weird. Why? He failed to see kind of the point. He was supposed to, realistically, he would have gone there, gotten in, tafuta tafuta, at least, any show show that you are kind of uh, vested in whatever it is that you are running after, okay? And uh, hmm, we came to find out that that was not really the right way to deal with things. And we're not just talking about him. We are talking about Peter himself, okay, and the other one. I think it's James. Let's just say it's James. I have a feeling it's James. So when they got there, they found out that Jesus was not in the tomb. What did they do? They went home. They went home. They did not even care to search. They did not care to ask anybody who, let's say, would have at least seen who, who has taken Jesus' body. They just went home. It doesn't make sense. And this is what we call the unbothered factor. Okay? They go there, found is not in, they left. Unbothered. That is how we are as Christians. We try something and you're like, I oh, know, this this is not the place, this is not the thing I should be doing, I am out. Let's say I'm ministering to people. They're like, nope, they're not listening, I am going. It's just that we we do not care anymore. We do not care to persist. We do not care to uh, keep moving up, like above or over the obstacles. We just don't care anymore. We are unbothered. And that is one of the things that is kind of making us um, weak, if we should put it into, uh, into words. Okay? What makes the church weak is that we are unbothered to do our duties. Mm, I know, I know. That one got heavy for no apparent reason, actually for some apparent reason. Number two, okay, factor number two is the urgency, okay? First, we are unbothered. Second, we check if it lines with what, with our schedule or schedule. I came to realize that in UK, British English say schedule, American English schedule, very weird. Anyway, so um, if it does not align with our schedule, we do not go for it okay we check what is urgent first and then we do it uh let's let's uh put it into this perspective okay uh the disciples okay uh this was after jesus had died he had resurrected that's in acts chapter 1 verse 6 to 2 what 
six to eight six to eight yeah uh so they wanted to know when he would come back okay like uh we've been with you all this time we've seen all these miracles you just came back from the dead you're going to heaven when are you coming back like uh is it soon is it next week is it next year you get as in it's like they're trying to find out what they really didn't need to know what they needed to know is that they had to minister to people until he comes back so that might be even past their let's say lifespan it might even be their great 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 not so great 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 grandchildren uh, but then they wanted to know and i'm not saying them wanting to know is a bad thing but we should not base what we do in terms let's say in accordance to our life our schedule our structure okay let's say for example um you watch news every 7 p.m or something but then there's this thing that you need to do also at 7 p.m okay news 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 doesn't feel a bit urgent uh there's that there's that thing that you can you can literally uh never and i mean never in capital letters trade time to do anything else if it's time to do that thing there's that one it may be two things it may be whatever there's that thing that you like if it's time for this it's time for this okay then something else happens and they're like you know uh, i really mm, it doesn't feel that urgent to me i can do it later that one that one in isaac for now and then we find out that let's say whatever you needed to do at that moment would have changed the world forever i know the world feels a bit too large scale but you know butterfly effect you do one thing here it ripples throughout time and space it becomes a very huge thing without you knowing anyway anyway uh yes so let's not get caught up in our own let's say timelines i know that sounds very you know if if you know me you know let's not get caught up in our own timelines but let us just do things in the way we receive them if that makes sense if something pops up take you, you may, let's say for example somebody needs you to pray for them it does not need to be an hour long prayer it doesn't even need to be a 10 minute prayer it could be a 2 minute 3 minute prayer and that's it then you keep on doing whatever you're doing who knows that might be a blessing that you've given a person might be a healing and then you put it off then that person keeps on suffering because you decided to do things uh, according to your own timeline that is uh, the urgency factor factor number three and our last factor okay the options factor mm. Now this one, now this one we can all relate to. You know that thing uh, where you have too many options, you end up doing the things that matter the least? Yeah. Now let's bring back to the resurrection day. Not really day, but resurrection era of Jesus Christ. Like the days between him resurrecting and him revealing himself to his disciples. So, guess what height. So, um uh we come to find out from the bible that some of the disciples peter uh math not matthew the, uh, the, the doubting one uh thomas 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 also called didymus by the way i i found this out uh like i don't know last year but one i found that name we are didymus who is who by the show of hands knows somebody called didymus in this day and age please tag them Tag them, let them watch this episode. Just just because their name is Didymus. Okay? So Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, uh the sons of Zebedee, James and John, and some two other disciples went back to their old ways, okay? Jesus had resurrected, but then uh, they are, Jesus had died, but then it's like that's it. So let's go and do something else. They had another option, going back to the things that they used to do. And I was fishing. And I can imagine the situation there. Uh, they would be fishing. Then somebody, let's say Peter, reminds them of, Oh, you remember that time when you were with Jesus? And uh, we caught a lot of fish. The net was almost breaking. We had to uh, tell Didi here to... Yes. 
did you Tell did he have to bring another boat? Like, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Oh, it was a good times, bro. They could be doing something else, okay? They could have taken that time, let's say, to pray for faith because it's not that Jesus didn't tell them that he would resurrect. It's not that Jesus didn't tell them that he would resurrect. He did tell them. Well, cryptically, but he did say that the Son of Man shall be killed and on the third day, ah, uh, he shall resurrect. He shall rise again. They should have prayed or just do something, the things that Jesus taught them to do. Okay, going out ministering to people. What did they do? They went back to the old ways. They had the option to step back and that's what they did. Which is pretty weird. For somebody who's worked with quite literally the greatest man on earth, going back to your former ways is one of the biggest L's you can take. The biggest step back you can ever have. Oh, for our uh, older audience, uh, taking an L is basically taking a loss. Okay, yes, I know I, I would be asked this at some point, so I just had to clarify, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we should try our best, try our best to be involved, okay? Let us not be unbothered. Let's try our best to dedicate time to doing things regardless of how our schedule looks like. Let us take time to stick to the ways that we have learned as Christians. Let us not go back because we have the option to, since times are getting weird in our Christian life. Okay? Okay. Uh, so, let's say for the unbothered, the unbothered factor, our tagline is, let us stop moving on in life if we are not moving with the Lord. Okay? Our our second factor, which it was unbothered, then urgency. Our urgency factor is sharing the gospel is more important. Sharing the gospel is important, and we need to stop neglecting the important because of the urgency of the urgent. I know that sounds weird, so I'll say it again. Sharing the gospel is important, and we need to stop neglecting the important because of the urgency of the urgent. It could be urgent but not important. It could be important, but not urgent. So we need to stop neglecting the important. What is going to help us grow because of the urgent, what's happening in the now. Number three, we need to commit to never be silent whenever and wherever we are regarding to the good news of the gospel. We must speak up for silence helps the cause of the devil, never to those who are lost. Okay, so yeah, that is basically it for this week. We should uh, we should shut down the silence conspiracy. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. I know I said we'll do things uh, the Nick Fury way, and we we haven't because uh, granted we don't know what the Nick Fury way is. That guy's a mysterious character. Well, anyway, still that's it for this week. I hope you got something from it. If it's one thing, two things share this message with somebody okay we need it in this day and age in this time more than ever okay uh -huh. so <clears throat> let us pray heavenly father we thank you for this uh, message that you've given us this day thank you for helping us understand that it is not uh, beneficial for us to stay in silence because nothing would really change and i pray father that even as this week uh, comes along I pray that you are going to be with us, that you are going to help us uh, stand for the word, that you are going to help us uh, uh, be f there for the people who need to hear this, that you are going to be involved, that you are not going to stay unbothered, that you are not going to let the things in our life uh, distract us from your word, that you are not going to uh, choose to move back to the things that we used to do just because things are getting uncomfortable in our glory. I pray that you're going to be with us, that you're going to bless us. Thank you for the people who have taken time to listen to this message. Bless them abundantly, King of all glory. Thank you for the team behind that in 20. And I thank you, Father, uh, even for this day that you've given us, because uh, it is by your grace that we are alive this day. We thank you and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray, trusting and believing. Amen. And that is it for this week. I shall see you next time. Shalom.
if you could add like some sparkly glitter that follows my hand i know it's like after effects things but yeah, anyway yeah that's basically it for this for this week i i say that like three times now so um yeah